So apparently they've, they've let the riffraff in at uh, Press Eyes. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Mark DeSmet, uh, Chief Medical Officer. Uh, maybe not riffraff after all. Uh, in fact, uh, Dr. DeSmet was kind enough to uh, do an, uh, an article with us about what Dr. Mozart believes is the future of innovation. Uh, Dr. DeSmet, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me. Absolutely. Um, so, Mark, tell me a little bit about uh, Press Size and why robotics is uh, not only innovation but revolution in ophthalmology. Well, Precise started about 10 years ago, so before we really started to hear much about robotics. And uh, at the time, I thought, you know, if we look at ophthalmology, right. we've always been able to develop new things with technological steps. Right. So I thought, you know, if we could bring in robotics, we'd be able to make that next step. And if we look at vitreoretinal surgery, I think we've reached more or less the limits of what we're able to do with our instruments. Yeah. And thinking about Mozart, mm -hmm. who you're impersonating right now. The imposter, that's right. Uh, yes, yeah. So imposter, as you're saying. You know, Mozart revolutionized the music in the time, you know, uh, using new instruments, uh, bringing in something that was really nice uh, and, and modern. And I think this would be the same thing with regards to robotics. This is the next generation. We can go beyond what we're able to do today. Mm. If you operate, you have uh, in your best years, which of course you haven't reached yet, mm. you have about 100 microns worth of tremor. And mm. this machine is at least 10 times better if you operate it on your own. And it's 100 times better if you let the robot carry out the surgery. Mm. So the way I anticipate the future is that uh, at some point when we've been able to develop this further, instead of wanting to do the surgery, we'll be a little bit like pilots in an airline today. We're going to pilot the surgery. We're going to tell it you have to go from A to B to C. You've got to do steps, steps A, B, C, and D. And the, uh, the robot will carry it out for us with a lot more precision. So, so Mark, you know, I used this word riffraff jokingly earlier. Ah, no, uh, no, you didn't. You did it on purpose, okay, with you're meaning. Right, because to make a point, which was, um, you know, do you think that there's going to be a day when a surgeon walks in the operating room and is going to say, who let the riffraff in? Bring the robot instead because uh, precise surgery is what we want to... Uh, I get. like that. So yeah. yeah, probably in the future the uh, a time will come when that can be possible. Yeah. My, my hope is that by the time I reach retirement, which is far away of course, um, we'll be at a stage where we're able to take the surgery out of these big ORs where we end up having to wait forever and bring it down into the office. Right. And you know, there are other technologies that are also coming along, one of which is the development of small laminar flow uh, systems that can maintain sterility just around the head. Mm -hmm. You know, the microscope, I think, is on the way out, and we'll have some nice video cameras that are compact and can go just on top of the eye and give us the same type of images, maybe even better than what we get today. And our system is very compact. It could easily fit inside a standard room. So, you know, can you imagine seeing your patients in the morning and operating just in your back office and, uh, and still being able to provide the level of sterility you need to provide? Mm. But in that kind of environment, you can't sort of be sitting at the patient doing the surgery yourself. So that's a little bit the vision of the future is to really bring it down to, uh, to our level. And one of the reasons for that also is that, you know, everywhere in the world we're under pressure with regards to uh, reimbursements yeah and the most compressible part of that reimbursement is your salary and mine mm -hmm. you know I know that as Mozart you get paid very well as a musician but there are limits uh, and uh, course, the way with the, the way I spend too uh, yes limits indeed uh, yes re and you know, I hope you're not going the same way as your as Mozart himself because you know he died of TB yeah so well, he certainly uh, did end up in the grave uh, so we don't want to go that route no. So if we bring the surgery to an office, we can recuperate whatever now goes to a surgery center. Mm. And I think there sits, you know, one of the advantages also purely from a economic standpoint for the physician. Beyond that, we have all these other things that are coming along like AI, right. big data, and um, uh, intelligent sensors. So we could have sensors that tell us exactly how far we are from the retinal surface. Right. You know, so that would help us to do high precision surgery fast. Uh, we can use uh, data that is being generated, how a person peels, for example, and we could get the uh, robot, the uh, uh, joystick, to have haptic feedback. So it tells you if you're going to do something that brings you in a danger zone. So you would be, you know, you would be able to anticipate. 
just as when a pilot tries to land his plane today, if he's going too fast close to the landing strip, there are, uh, you know, uh, warning signs and bells that go off in the cockpit. So we can do the same thing. Mm. So it will make the surgery safer. We'll be able to uh, end. One final thing I was thinking about is, you know, when we're in training, we get to see all kinds of surgeries from different people. Once you go out and practice, this, this link with new developments becomes more difficult. You have to come to a place like this to see it. And so if you have a new surgery, a new technique that really is revolutionary and able to maybe do something you've never been able to do before, I don't know, do a rexis from the underside or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, be able to bring cells and sheets in the subretinal space, well, we could probably in the future program the robot with the necessary software have you watch a series of videos and then just carry it out, you know, uh, just as the surgeon who developed the technique. What do you think of that? Well, uh, Mark, I'm wondering, are, does that make you the Charlie Kelman of our time? Are you trying to disrupt things to that level? Well, at some point, yeah, I think I am. I'd like to be able to disrupt surgery and, and, uh, and allow us to step into the future. After yeah. all, that's what you did, Mozart. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Excellent. Um, you know, another question mark I have is, uh, I was asking some other participants here on the Pi Talks, um, who are at a very high level in industry, um, is there any fear that we should have about the future of AI? Uh, Elon Musk is a bit dark on it, you know, yes. suggesting that man eventually will become machine and uh, perhaps be disposed of. So, is there any responsibility among uh, innovators like yourself to, to ensure that um, we're, we're staying within ethical boundaries of some sort? Well, I think in all industry there should be these ethical bounds and you know I'm uh, at basically a physician so some people ask me if I want to replace the ophthalmologist and that isn't my aim. I don't think we should ever be replaced by technology. But speaking about AI, um, I'm a bit skeptical. I think the name doesn't really, uh, it's, it's a hype. Mm. We're talking about artificial intelligence, uh, about, you know, uh, looking at data and being able to uh, manipulate it in some way, extract some information. We're bypassing one of the important elements, that is trying to understand what goes on. So for me, AI is good because it takes us to the next step, but we have to understand what is happening. So, for example, we could probably look at the best possible motion to create a, uh, a flap and create a, a rexis, but you know, the membrane often tears, so why mm. does it tear? Mm. So maybe we get some insight, but we still have to go back and try to understand, and that AI won't do. So a, uh, a physician, a scientist, uh, people will still be required. I think AI will just make things move more quickly, but it won't take away the need for us to solve the problems. And you know, a lot of physicians are musicians as well, and of course there's something very creative about music, I wonder if there are certain scenarios where surgeons come up against a problem and perhaps, you know, uh, conventional wisdom would say, you solve this problem this way. But perhaps in that moment, creatively they think, oh, my instinct says, I'm actually going to solve it this way, which perhaps turns out to be even better. Yeah. I wonder if that instinct that is so human uh, is something that will be very, very hard to replicate in the artificial intelligence space. Well, that's an interesting question with regards to, um, I see uh, artificial intelligence as a tool. So we, we can get some insight into how to maybe improve certain procedures. But as you just mentioned, the initiation and often the revolutionary step, I don't think will come from AI. It will mm. come from individuals like you that are creative, that uh, initiate a new process. But You've just said, okay, I think it might be better to do it in this way. So that's uh, the beginning of the process. Mm. Uh, let's create a robot. So mm. we created a robot. The first time I used it and I started pulling on the joystick, I saw the needle go straight through and I thought, oh my God, if I ever use this in a human, I'm halfway through the brain by the time I know when I have to stop. Oh, yeah. So then you have to build in uh, you know, the rest of the equation. That is, where do you put the stops? How do you measure distance? And so when you develop your new technique, their AI might help you to find the best approach to make a use of your, your, new, your new invention. Hmm. hmm, fascinating. Well, Mark, thanks for joining us here on Pi Talks, of all things, talking with Mozart and enlightening us about robotics and the future of AI. Well, I'm glad you invited me, Mozart, and oh. best luck to you. Thank you. <laughs>